Have you met people that you like that you have you met people that are like cable without no reason? Have you met people who, when they step into the room where nobody knows them, in just a few minutes, they captivate everywhere? That is the person, you are the one I'm talking about. I know you are thinking about somebody else somewhere. You are the one I'm talking about. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. Everywhere you walk into, you capture it. Every territory you step, you take over. That's favor. Everybody say that's favor. So the sons of Jacob were very jealous of their brother Joseph. You know why they were jealous? Everywhere they go, they would just single Joseph out of their midst. That was why they sold him out. That was why they wanted to kill him. Imagine, all the sons of Jacob, he stood out among them. The Bible says he was the one with the clothes of many colors. So in the book of Acts, I want you to please open your Bible to Acts chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. The living, New Living Translation. Acts 7, 9 and 10. Can we have it on the screen, please? Acts chapter 7. He said, these patriots were what? Were jealous of their brother Joseph. So when you are being, when, when they, when, when you become a victim of jealousy, it's because you are blessed. Stop praying that you don't want people to jealous you, to be jealous of you. That's not a good prayer. There are two sides of life. One side is the side where you are being envied, you are being jealous, envy side. The other side is a pitiable side. You need to make a choice this morning. Where do you want to stand? You can't stand in between. Is that you are being pitied or you are being envied? Some of you don't want to be envied. Say, everybody, everybody are envious of me. I don't know, Pastor, please help. What are you talking about? That doesn't need prayer. That only needs thanksgiving. Did you hear what I said? What are you talking about? It doesn't need, it doesn't need prayer. It only needs what? The reason why they are envious of you is because God has favored you. Favor attracts envy. If you are seated this morning in this place or you're watching online, nobody has ever envied you. You have, you have never experienced envy before. It's because you have not experienced favor before. If you are favored, you will also be envied. Hello? I'm not saying everybody will envy you, but somebody somewhere will just be envious of you. For no reason. Are you following me? What is that? What is that? Somebody inside his heart or heart, when you walk into the room, he's saying, what is it? Your presence will irritate him or her. When you want to talk, he wants to talk. Sam over Sabi. He wants to talk again. Somebody somewhere will be bitter. Somebody somewhere will not like your face. Even Jesus, nobody, not everybody likes his face. Are you following me? So the Bible says, where we read, can we have that scripture again? He said, the patriots were what? Jealous of their brother, Joseph. And they sold him to be a slave in Egypt. But God was with him. And I told you last Sunday that, when you, that there are two types of favor. Favor with man and favor with God. I will expand more in the uh, in other services. Favor with man, favor with God. Joseph experienced favor with God. And I told you last Sunday that when you experience favor with God, one of the indications is that God will always be with you. Everybody say, God is with me. Oh, you are not saying it like you mean it. Say it, even if nobody believes it, say it like you believe it. The Bible says, and God was with him. Every, even in the prison, God was with him. Even on the sick bed, God will be with you. In case you fall on sick, God, even in the prison, when everybody will have left, family will have left, people have deleted his number from their phone, God didn't delete his number. Are you following me? The Bible says, his brothers envy him because of, you know, he was favored. God was with him. The next verse, verse 10 quickly. And because God was with him, and he rescued him from what? What did God's presence did for him? 
rescued him from all his trouble. Because God's presence, manifest presence was with him all the time. Every trouble he ran into, God rescued him. God will rescue you. Any form of trouble you may run into, financial, physical, God will rescue you. If you run into financial trouble, God will rescue you. Maybe you borrow money somewhere and invested and the money went into the air. <laughs> MMM. And the people you took money from, they are running after you. God will still favor you. You, you didn't say amen. amen. In the midst of it, his favor will rescue you. Amen. Look at that scripture. And God rescued him from all his trouble. And God gave him what? What did God give him? Before who? King of Egypt. God also gave Joseph unusual wisdom so that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all of Egypt and put him in charge of the palace. Don't forget, he's not a citizen. He's a foreigner. It doesn't happen like that. But favor will break protocol. Favor will change policy for your sake. You don't know what we're talking about. Favor we make. That's why, you see, what I'm preaching throughout this service, second, fourth service, is to prepare you. God told me personally, he said, he said, I should prepare this congregation for uncommon favor. Because some things will happen to you that it has never happened before. It doesn't always happen like that. They don't always do it that way. You don't know what we're talking about. They don't always choose foreigners to be governor and oversee the palace and the whole country. But favor and pick them. God favored them. Look at that scripture again. God favored them. Let's have it. Verse 10 again. Verse 10 quickly. God favored them that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all of Egypt. A foreigner was in charge of all of Egypt. Someone that is not qualified. Favor will qualify you for what you are not qualified for. Favor, favor will qualify you beyond your CV. Amen. Look, a member of this church, as for the first time in his life, he was to travel to U.S. He went to U.S. Embassy. And they asked him, which is normal question in Embassy, where is your invitation letter? He forgot. That is the, that is the major thing. He started looking for the thing. He couldn't find it. And they gave him the visa. Does that make sense? How can you want to go to America for the first time? You've never been there before. And the major thing, you forgot. You're supposed to either go home and bring it, or they tell you, sorry, we can't, because we want to know who is inviting you. He said, for, he, he searched, searched, he couldn't find it. Yet they gave him. They gave him two years. Somebody is here. Where you least qualify. Favor we qualify you. Amen. Where they are turning other people back, favor we open the door for you. Amen. Where it seems there is no way, favor we make a way for you. Amen. Listen to me. Fa Sometimes when you hear some testimonies, it will look like a lie. Yes, that's what favor does. It will make your story look like you are lying. There are things in my person, in my life, there are things sometimes that even me, I can't even believe myself. It's difficult for me to believe. Abakuk 1.5 says, I will walk a walk in your days. When they tell you, you will not believe. Huh? You walk how they say, that's the, that's the gift. You say, which gift? Because you thought they are taking you out to show you that they just bought you an Okada. But they said, that's the gift. Your gift. Say, for me. That's why you see sometimes people start crying. Big, a, 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 I mean, mature human being. They will tell them such and they will start crying because if like, they feel like a baby. Like, what are you people talking about? When favor is at work in your life, it will mesmerize you. You don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the favor you are used to. I'm not talking about the favor that is common around you. I am talking about something very, very unusual and uncommon will happen to you. You get a letter, you open it, you read through it, Maybe a letter of promotion or a letter of recommendation or a letter of salary increment or a letter of uh, approval of a contract. You open it, you see the figure. 
and you start crying. And people will be tapping the Ogawa, why are you crying? You are shedding tears because this is unbelievable. Don't forget, this is our year of unbelievable elevation. It's not the type that you can easily believe. Favor will make that happen for you. But quickly, because of my time, I want to give you three major things that was common with Joseph. Everywhere Joseph was, these three things were common. Probably, you, you may just think, oh, jo Joseph is lucky. Joseph is not lucky. There is nothing called luck. L-U-C-K does not exist. What exists is favor. Are you following what I'm saying? Somebody says the only spelling for luck, I will soon tell you. It's work. W-O-R-K. Praise God. There's nothing like luck. So, number one, if you want to experience this type of, this type of favor, work diligently and skillfully at work. Anywhere you find yourself, work with diligence, work with skill. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? You can't be the laziest guy around and you'll be experiencing favor. You'll be expecting favor. You can't be the one that comes to late, comes to late, I mean, comes late to work and you're expecting favor. No, it can't work like that. It can't work that way. For you to experience this type of uncommon favor, you have to be, the Bible says everything that was done was done by Joseph. He was diligent. For, for everything he does, he does it with diligence and skill. He was skillful at work. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 29, says thou a man that is diligent in his business. He will stand before kings and not mere men. That's favor. That's what? Favor. If you if you are a business owner, you have to be diligent. You have to be skillful with your work. I like the good news Bible. It says, says thou a man that is diligent and skillful. The two has to go together. To be diligent means to walk, to walk neck down. To be skillful means to walk neck up. So that means every of your being is at work at the same time. Are you following what I'm saying? Huh? So you have to be diligent. Everybody say, I need to be diligent. You don't, nobody favors lazy staff. Nobody favors a fashion designer that will not deliver when he said he will deliver. He said this cloth, you get it in five in one week, and it's five weeks now. And you are praying for favor. That's not how it works. It doesn't work like that. I would say it doesn't work like that. So you have to be hardworking, you have to be competent at what you do. You have to you have to learn what you do as much as you can and do it well. Huh? The gift of a man makes room for him. And, and brings him before kings and not me. I mean, now if that's gonna then that skill, that gift we have to be. Sharpen properly. You sew clothes for people, it looks like it's a carpenter that sewed the clothes. That cannot bring favor. If it's carpentry, you want to do go and do carpentry. If it's sewing, you want to do go and do sewing. You have to be good at what you do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know why you have to be good at what you do? The competition is getting higher every day. If you're into catering, you have to, you have to what you make, you have to put it beside what those who are in front of that business too are making. If it's jollof rice, each, put your jollof rice on one side, put other people that are into what you're doing that are doing better than you, put their, attend their party and test their own jollof rice. Don't say God is partial. Check the two jollof. It's easy to say. Which one is better? People don't get to the top by chance. No. They don't get to the top by chance. It's, people, it's when people are good at what they do that they get to the top. When people become, when people are on top of their game, that's when they get to the top. Are you following me? Be on top of your game. That may not be a day job. That may be a continuous working on yourself. A continuous putting in effort. That, but make sure you're always better than who you are yesterday. Keep getting better on the job. Huh? You may not be the best yet, but keep growing. You may not be the best yet, but keep getting better. Because as you keep getting better, God's will keep multiplying in your life. In 1 Kings 11, 28, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 28, he said, he said the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor 
And Solomon, seeing that the man was industrious, made him the officer over all the labor force of the house of Joseph. The man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man that he was what? From his village. Huh? Is that what he saw? That he was from his village. No. He saw that he was industrious. He made him ruler over all the things that were in his house. Because he was hardworking. He was on top of his game. Amen. Say, hey, this of himself, they don't like me. They are doing parako. They are doing, uh, they, all of them, because they are Igbo, I'm a Yoruba, that's why they are not. No, that's not. If you are good enough, they will forget your tribe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're good enough, they will what? The day Nigeria gets a very good leader, tribe will become nothing again. Religion will become nothing again. Why we are still conscious of religion, conscious of tribe, is that we are always being governed, we are always being led by mediocres, by people who don't even know the least assignment of a leader is to communicate is to talk. Our leaders can't even talk. I don't know how we are voting for them. 